In today's episode, we are focused on mindset, just not mindset, but the positive mindset shifts that every insurance professional needs to make. And what we've done is we've compiled our most downloaded episodes from the last few months of the insurance buzz, and we're going to be featuring Dan Kitajima, one of the most positive, optimistic, genuine agents that we've ever had on the buzz. With that being said, let's start the show. You have to have a step-by-step process because this is a question that we get not only from consumers out on in the wild, as you said, on hikes, but also from our community members, just random agents and producers reaching out to us around, hey, like I'm really struggling right now. I'm having a problem. I feel like every call has to do with rates going up. I'm getting demotivated. I'm getting tired of having these conversations. I've been having them for the last two years. And I'm still unclear around why rates are even mm-hmm. going up besides there are cat claims and there, there is inflation. So how do I educate or communicate that to the customer to where it is understandable to where they're not calling every five months like, hey, my rates went up again. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. And I think, too, you have to think about it from the consumer standpoint, because all of us are paying for insurance as well. And I think there's this understanding of inflation with products that you use on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I think there's a disconnect there when it comes to insurance, because for me, I can see it in the grocery store. And I know that you can, too. You go and you buy something. And that's cost of goods everywhere. And you can see it kind of going up. But in your mind, there's almost this justification because these are products that you're using every single day or you're using them every single week. So there's a frequent use and rebuy process. Insurance isn't set up like that. Insurance isn't something that you use every single day. Insurance is set up to be on your worst day this is peace of mind. This is your protection. So it's one of those things that you actually don't want to use. So when it continues to go up, I understand the frustration because me, like you, I don't want to have to pay for things that I'm not using. So I think you're going to break it down and really get into it. But I think whenever we're delivering this, and I know that they're coming in all day long and it's easy for it to stack on top of you. But I want you to pause and take a breath and have some empathy because this is the first time that they're going to have this conversation with you or the second time. This is probably the 30th time that you've had this conversation in a day with all different customers. So and just wh- take a breath. And what's the, uh, you've done a teaching on this before, said it, but like the garbage can. Like, oh, well, I think I, that's I think that's relevant in this conversation. So we had one of the best customer service managers that we've ever had. And she was fantastic. And she would have people just, you know how it goes. It's their worst day. So they're calling about claims and rate increases. And I went up to her and I'm like, how are you doing this? How are you handling this with such grace and compassion and empathy? And she said, a long time ago, I was told that people are like garbage trucks And they go around all day and they pick up trash and they continually pick up other people's trash. And at some point, they have to dump their trash. And she said, if I'm the person that they feel comfortable enough dumping their trash on, I can handle it. And I thought, what a beautiful way to look at that. She didn't take it personally. She just understood that we're all going through stuff. And throughout the day and the week and the month, we continue to accumulate trash until it's too much. And you might be the person that they dump their trash on. So just have some empathy that they're not going to just dump their insurance trash on you. They're going to dump <laughs> their kids' trash. stress. They're going to dump their yeah everything, trash, their work trash, all their of that money trash, yep. their stress trash. Because and this isn't a conversation that I want to get into real in depth. But as you know, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to money and studying charts. And right now, credit card levels, credit card debt is at all time highs. Saving rates at are at all time lows. And so people are financially stressed Mm -hmm. right now. And so when you get these, as you were saying, I mean, insurance is a promise. It's a promise that on your worst day, we will be there. It's something that people can't touch. They don't feel, they can't see until they need it. And so when you get these rate increases, it's another thing for the consumer to just say, man, that's something I'm paying for that I don't even use. Where can I get it cheaper? And so when you put yourself in the customer's shoes, 
I would really come at it that way. And I think that that analogy is really good. Like they're going to dump a ton of trash on you. Don't take this shit personal. They're not personally attacking you, even though I know sometimes they may personally attack you. Oh man. They're just having spicy chicken nuggets, man. Yeah, man. And we talk about this a lot. We talk about mindset so much because if you're in the industry, you understand. But if you're not in the industry, you don't understand how ferocious it is, Mm. like how it moves at such speed and how it's constant just disappointment and challenge and obstacle. So we're always going to reinforce back into you a positive mindset because it's very, very important that you take care of yourself and you come at it the best way you can with empathy and compassion, even though I know that you're getting trash stacked on you day in and day out. We want to just be like a breath of fresh air to go, hey, Mary, remember to take care of yourself. Remember to take a deep breath before these calls come in and don't take it personally the best way you can. That's right. I got to ask you, Dan, because with all the stuff that's going on, how are you staying positive right now? Yeah, there's a lot of things, you know, I think one of the things is that I figured that this is a time for me to prove myself to see what I'm made of. So I think when it's you're tested, it's actually an opportunity to find out and to build your character. I think one of the ways to stay positive is also to move your body. I really believe in that. Um, I've also become even more strict on my diet and not having any bad vices like, you know, um, that I've had in the past and really cutting things out. And just being grateful of the opportunity, you know, unfortunately, uh, this business has been brutal. So a lot of my peers in different situations, you hear some bad stories and compared to them, uh, compared to a lot of different situations, you know, there's always uh, something that we could find opportunities from. So, you know, I'm healthy. My kids are healthy. So I really have nothing to complain about. And I look at it as a challenge to prove myself and to actually really build out systems where things are going to be even better than before. Because if I didn't go through any of this, then I wouldn't have been as resourceful. I wouldn't have thought of these changes that would change my agency forever. If everything was fine, like, I think we would have just kept going the way we we have. But I feel like, again, we built this foundation now that we could really build upon. So I look at it as something that was great, you know. And next time something like this happens, hopefully it's not for a while, but a crisis comes, I feel more ready for it. And it'll just be a chance for me to find out what we're made out of again so just made us stronger and uh, for that i'm yeah grateful and again optimistic you know hey my agency is gonna be even bigger than it was before because of this so having hope not hope but you know having a goal having big goals i think also helps too all right now i'm going to frame the question i just have to have a moment because that is so refreshing to hear just that positive outlook and how you are grabbing for gratitude in everything that you're doing, like at home and in work and no matter what is being stacked upon you, you're like, okay, this is just a test or a lesson, or this is building character adversity or whatever. Like you're seeing the upside of it. So thank you. It just, it it feels refreshing that even if there's craziness or bad things or challenges or however you want to phrase it, that you can still find the good. No, yeah. I think um, last year definitely forced me to find ways to stay positive. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it was uh, something that I got a lot of experience in. And the one thing that I heard you say that I definitely don't want to go overlooked, you're taking care of yourself personally. Like mm-hmm. you said, you're, you've cleaned up your eating. You've eliminated some things that maybe you used to do. Probably work. I know you work out. So... I'm a firm believer. I think we both are like what's going on in your personal life is going to be a direct response of what's happening in the professional life as well. And so not only are you going back to the basics in the business, it seems like it also seems like you're going back to the basics of, hey, what habits do I need to be disciplined with in my personal life that make me feel the best I can feel from gratitude exercises to working out to eating healthy that not only make you feel good, but they also allow you to also perform well at the same time. Yeah. Last year required me to be at my best, you know, survival mode. So it it really was a season where I got tested, but I think uh, during the losing season, that's when you learn the most. It really exposes everyone's true character. And, um, you find out who could stay true to their core principles and their values. Yeah, taking care of ourselves is job number one, because if you can't, then you really can't take care of anybody else. So as leaders, we have a huge responsibility for our agency and for our clients and for our families. So 
yeah, I mean, just getting enough sleep <laughs> starts from there. There's so much stress and you require so much energy to uh, survive last year. So I think those habits, you know, I think they're going to stay with me forever. So another reason to be grateful for going through what I did is because, hey, I saw the benefits of when you're back against the wall, turning into another gear, you know, and I think those are things, like you said, habits uh, is what really makes a difference on, over the long term. There's somebody listening that's going through the season that you were just in. They're navigating adversity. They're feeling pressure. They're defeated. What would be either the first action step that they can take to get out of that situation or one piece of advice that you can offer to somebody that's in that, that season of life? Yeah, thanks, Courtney, uh, for asking. I think the first step is just taking accountability. You know, I think a lot of times we try to become victims of the situations, but hey, we're the ones that chose to be with this carrier or to be live in the state or uh, be in the insurance business to begin with. You know, so whatever you did it was the reason you're in the situation. So I think the first thing to do is to just take control of your situation you're in instead of putting blame and um, trying to run away from the problems. So I think the first step really is to look inside of yourself and say, hey, what can I learn from this experience and look at it objectively and not getting emotional about it and say, what am I going to do? Strategize, adapt, and then take massive action. 